Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution R Set Play. And today I'm going to be doing a fun little mixed media piece in my sketchbook. We're gonna be playing around with some colored pencils and some watercolors. And I wanna do like something oceany. I think I wanna do a starfish. And I'm actually going to be playing around with some saran wrap to get some fun textures in the watercolor. And Playing around with using watercolor on top of colored pencil to create a resist. So buckle up because it's going to be a fun, messy time. And I'm actually kind of hoping I get messy because it'll give me a chance to try out these new art wipes that Hippie Crafter sent me. We'll, we'll put these to the test today. All right, so I think what I'm going to do... I thought I had a mechanical pencil right here. I think what I want to do is I want to draw a starfish. And I'm not going to be precious about it because this is really just a way to play with materials. I don't have a reference or anything. I'm just kind of going off of imagination today. I just want to play around in the sketchbook. I've actually done a similar piece already with a mermaid. But I <laughs> I tried filming that for you and um, that didn't work so well. The filming did not work so well. And so we're going to do a starfish today. I'll show you the mermaid one after. I don't really need I don't even have my dog chewed on the end of that. I don't even have an eraser here. Okay, so I had to switch to voiceover because my furnace turned on and it is outrageously loud. And so I was hoping that I'd be able to get through most of this project by just chit-chatting with you, but it didn't end up happening that way. So I am going to do a voiceover and I sped it up just a little bit in lieu of time, obviously. So basically what I'm doing is I'm going through with my colored pencils first and I am just laying in the details of my starfish. I'm not, like I said earlier, I'm not going to get too picky about it. He's just going to be this fun little fella hanging out in the ocean, which sounds fantastic right now because it's February, it's cold. I want summer <laughs> or at least spring. I'd settle for spring, but summer would be great. I really want to go to the coast and I've been feeling that a lot lately and I cannot wait to be able to go with my husband on a day trip to the coast and explore the beach and come across some fun little starfish because that actually happened to us a few years ago. We walked down the beach and we came across a bunch of different starfish and it was amazing. So I'm really hoping to do that again this year. So I'm going through and I'm trying to use colors that I know will blend well with the ocean. So I wanted to have the pink in there, obviously, but I'm also using a lot of blues, teals, and purples. So that way there, I wanted to give the impression that it was underwater. So I'm using those colors to show that it's underwater. But again... This is mainly experimental. I'm not using a reference. I'm not trying to be perfect about it. I'm just trying to try some different techniques and experiment with mixed media because you know how much I love my different art supplies and I want to find new and fun ways to use them together. And so that's mainly what this is about. I want to experiment with colored pencil and watercolor together. And I want to also try some fun techniques that I've seen other artists use online with incorporating things like saran wrap and, and you know, just seeing what textures I can get in my watercolors. And of course, typically speaking, if you want to be archival about it, or if you're hoping to actually have full coverage of something, you want to put your colored pencil on top of your watercolor because watercolor is obviously water-based and colored pencils are wax-based. And so, Colored pencils create a resist and the watercolors will not cling permanently to your colored pencils. And that's why you want to keep that in mind if when you're working. I'm doing this purposely. You can actually use your colored pencils as a resist purposely. So you want to keep that in mind. What techniques do you want to use? And just be careful because if you want your work to be archival or if you're going for a certain effect, then you're definitely not going to want 
your colored pencils to be on the bottom. I mean, this is technically archival for the kind of effect that I'm going for. I want the colored pencil to resist the watercolor. And so that's why I'm doing it this way. But if you don't want that to happen, if you're looking to have something to fully cover something, you definitely want to go the other way around and have your colored pencil on top of your watercolor. I'm just bringing in some of those teal colors. And I'm using Holbein watercolors and my Derwent Light Fast colored pencils. These are materials that I have downstairs right now. I didn't want to have to go up to my studio and search for other materials. It is a mess up there right now, but we are making some progress and I will have a video on that when the studio is done, but that's going to be a long time. <laughs> so now I have wet my paper with like a one inch flat brush and then I've gone through with my watercolor and I've put it, laid it down. And now I'm going on top of the saran wrap and I'm crinkling it up because I want to have a fun water texture underneath. And I pulled it up and then I took a lint-free towel and I blotted like the extra watercolor off of there. But look at that fun, cool, ripply effect it causes. Now, I've seen other people use the saran wrap technique and they recommend letting it dry. And you can absolutely do that. I haven't tried it that way yet and I probably should because it would probably be more saturated that way. However, I'm not patient. And I didn't want to let it dry. I just wanted to play. And I'm still pretty happy with the effect that I got. The left side of the page, I wasn't as excited about. So I went in with more watercolor and I tried to fix it and it didn't necessarily work out in my favor. So then I had to come over it with more watercolor, more saran wrap to try and get that effect. And of course, it didn't ever look as fresh as the other side that I had left natural, I guess you could say, after the first layer of saran wrap. So now I'm going through and I'm just using a wet, clean brush and lifting some of that watercolor to get those ripple effects to try and get it to match. So there are different ways you can do this technique. There are different ways you can create ripples in water. You don't have to have saran wrap. And with this saran wrap, I'm actually saving it and reusing it on my leftovers later. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That'd be awful. Um, this saran wrap wasn't too messed up or stuck to itself. I was able to wipe most of the blue off, and I'm actually going to just keep it and reuse it for other watercolor techniques later on. So it's not a one-and-done deal. I'm going to get as much use out of it as I possibly can, so I'm not wasting so much plastic. And I'll probably only use it for something that has similar colors anyway. So if there's still a little blue left on it, I'm not going to be concerned. And do not reuse it for your leftovers. <laughs> Public service announcement. Do not mix your art supplies, no matter how non-toxic they are, with your food. I'm just saying. And then I'm just coming back through to try and create some more details. I'm going into the areas that were darker. Like if there's a dark ripple next to it, next, like on the starfish, then I'm darkening that area on the starfish as well, trying to create that kind of ripple look on top. And I waited for my paper to be mostly dry before I did that because going in with colored pencil on wet paper can cause some tearing. And now for the satisfying part where I undress my paper and tear off the tape. Woo woo. And then I will share with you my, my first impressions. Okay, so here it is. What do you guys think? I had a lot of fun with this. It's a little hard to control, and so obviously I got I tried to like fix things over here and it didn't work. I actually like this side so much better where it was just from the saran wrap. Um but I really like that. I think it's just such a fun way to create texture and I like the way it creates like water texture. So what do you think? I had a lot of fun with it and I liked working with the watercolor over the colored pencil because like I could lift the watercolor off after to show the details I wanted to show. But also I purposely didn't do full coverage on the starfish itself. So that way there the watercolor could sink in to the parts of the paper that weren't touched by colored pencil. So it made it look like he was more a part of the water. And I thought that was pretty cool. 
if I had had an eraser, I would have done probably more lines over him to kind of show. But this was really just to play with materials so that I can use these techniques and more finished work down the line. As I mentioned before, I had done one already and I, this was the mermaid one that I did. So this is the first one I did and I did a lot more with the colored pencil and I came in and I darkened the spots in between where the saran wrap had lifted things. But this time I wanted to keep it fresher and lighter and I really liked the way it came out. So I'll probably experiment with this technique in the future, but yeah, I feel like I learned something. Okay, so let's see about these wipes. I actually didn't make as big of a mess as I thought I would. Um, I'm just going to put some more on here. Why not? <laughs> I really like having things like this on hand because they're really convenient. So this stuff was dried on. That came really well came off really well oh there's some back here that you can't see that I just cleaned up and these kind of have like a rough texture to them and they lift really well but you have to be careful because certain surfaces it will actually lift <laughs> uh it'll actually lift like the texture of certain surfaces off I I use sorry I just found some more paint in my videos, you have probably seen that I have like the marble texture in the background of some of my videos. And that is because I actually have covered some of my surfaces with contact paper that looks like marble. I used these on that surface. These are supposed to be used for hands too. So I'm just cleaning up my hands. I used that. I used these on that surface and it actually lifted the marble pattern right off of the contact paper. So that shows that they're pretty strong. They're definitely really strong. They have um, an interesting scent to them. I can't place the scent. It's not overpowering. It's not too chemically. I mean, obviously it has a bit of a chemical smell, but let's read a little bit about these. These are safe on the hands and tested to be used on the skin. I'm not going to try and say that word right now. Even though I know how to say it, I will not be able to say it on camera. And it can be used to clean up hands, wet oil and acrylic paint droplets, brushes, canvas, adhesives, tray liners, epoxy, grime, and more. And it obviously tells you how to do it. Do not flush them. Discard in trash. So far, I'm really, really liking them. I just have to be mindful of what surfaces I use them on. And But so far, I'm liking them. It has lifted things really well off of things off of things that's specific it it has worked really well for my purposes obviously you just saw it clean my hands I haven't had any trouble with using them I haven't noticed any problems on my hands or anything they've been gentle enough and I can be sensitive to certain chemicals and stuff like that certain soaps I can't use and this hasn't caused any issues for me and I think they're really cool looking too like that's really really neat and what I do is if I haven't used them up a lot because I hate waste like so if I haven't cleaned up a big mess with them I'll actually kind of just stick it back in the top and close it and reuse it next time because I really don't like waste that's the one thing that I don't like about having like disposable wipes is they're disposable and it's in it you know it's going into the landfill and things like that but I don't know I really really like these and it also it has the ingredients on the back yeah so if you're interested in something like this, I think I like I said they're convenient to have around the studio. Then I will link them in the description below. I just I've had these for a little bit. They sent them to me for a while ago, and I hadn't used them in a video yet. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about them. Just something neat to have around in the studio. I actually think I want to do a video where I talk about the the top tools that I like to keep in the studio. Things that aren't necessarily art supplies, but things that I think are handy to have in the studio, certain, you know, like rulers, things like that. If that's something you're interested in, let me know in the description below. Also, how did you like this project? Would you like me to use this technique more in the future? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week. You have a great day. Bye.